Today, on Ham Radio Q&A, we're gonna get inside the box. Hello, and thanks for joining us today on Ham Radio q and I'm Michael, KB9VBR. You, you might remember a couple of weeks ago, I did a video on the uh, Luton LT898UV, a dual band mobile radio. This is one of those um, inexpensive Chinese uh, radios that you can pick up for under a street price of about $70. Models identical to the Lexan and the Jetstream models. Well, the first video, well, we kind of looked at the um, at the features of the radio, its small form factor, and um, talked a little bit about its 10 watt transmit power. But um, I also mentioned that the, the radio itself was gonna be part of an ultra small and portable uh, radio go box. And that's what we got here. Now this is a 30, al a 30 caliber plastic ammo can, and it's enough space for that small radio, microphone, and also I got an eight amp hour gel cell battery into this thing. Opening the Opening the, the case up, um, we're just going to pull the microphone out of here. I got the radio mounted to a piece of plywood uh, with some with some Velcro. And uh, the neat thing we did here is the piece the, the wood piece is small enough so that I can pull it out and either operate the radio inside the case or set it on top. So it has a forward operating position if I'm sitting at a desk or a table or something. The antenna, um, a jumper here with an SO239, uh, just a piece of aluminum that I bent at an angle so we could mount the antenna uh, cable uh, right to the front of the radio. That works great you know, if it's in a forward position or if the um, radio itself is inside the case. Powered by um, we have, uh, Anderson power poles and the battery. I built a double connection uh, power pole connector here. And in fact, I'll show you how to do that in a future video. It's a, a really neat, neat little project if you need to make, um, if you want to make an Anderson power pole splitter. So, after using the radio for a little bit, I decided uh, I, I've got a few impressions of it. And um, some are positive, and there's a couple negatives, too. So, let's first talk about the good with this, with this radio. Well, I found out that the 10 watts of transmit power is more than sufficient for my needs. Uh, running mobile with this radio with a, um, just a, a mag mount whip antenna, you know, easily, easily, you know, cover 40, 50 miles or so. Uh, on, a, on a good repeater system. You know, maybe if it was a low power repeater, it would not have quite that range. But on the highway, it was, you know, the radio worked great. Small form factor, I love the small form factor. It just as I said, it fits inside the case beautifully. You know, if I was gonna mount this in, in some of the smaller cars today, I probably wouldn't have trouble finding a decent, decent place to put it. And also, you know, the radio is easy to program. Uh, comes with a programming cable. Uh, the cable was um, it, the cable worked well with my older Windows XP computer. Also worked with the Windows 10 computer. Uh, Chirp programming software recognizes it. It comes up as the Lexan radio, so it was real easy to program using Chirp. Radio does come with a programming CD, but I don't recommend using that at all. In fact, I didn't even take it out of its wrapper. I just went right away with Chirp and uh, cut and pasted my channel list from another radio into the new one, and away we go. And also, moderately loud um, top-mounted speaker. Uh, audio on the speaker was decent. You know, we could hear it, could hear it just fine in the, in the vehicle. Now, let's talk about some of the bad things about this radio. Well, it's an inexpensive Chinese-made radio. Um, I think it's using the same SDR or software-defined radio components that you're going to find in the, um, in the handheld radios, like the Baofeng here. So... The, um, the front end, it overloads very easily. It's got poor intermod rejection. Found that out traveling mobile with it, drove past a medical center, and all I got was pager intermod coming into this radio. So, um, and also in the scan mode, it will tend to, it, it, it tended to lock up on channels for me where, where it was picking up, must have been picking up a spurs or something that would just break the squelch on the radio. So. Um, if I was in a high urban environment, I may have second thoughts about using uh, an inexpensive radio like this and would invest in something with better intermod rejection. Second, mediocre scan function. Yes, it scans, but it scans slow. Well, now, I should also say I've had, other, I've had other radios like Kenwood's and Icom's that scan slow too. So 
not the worst thing in the world. I usually don't scan with a radio like this. Or if I'm scanning, it's only a select number of channels. And there is a channel lockout function in the menu, so you can only scan the channels you need. And then finally, the, the, the third thing that's almost a deal killer for me, but not quite, because I'll tell you why, is the microphone on this radio. This thing is terrible. Um, when using the microphone with the radio, I consistently receive poor audio on, um, in my on-the-air signal reports. So with that, I did a little bit of an audio test uh, between this microphone uh, and a, a stock microphone, and also I, I picked up an aftermarket microphone uh, to see what, if, if I could come up with a better solution, and um, here are my results. All right, I'm sitting in the car now. I'm going to do a quick audio test of the included uh, speaker microphone for the Luton LT898UV uh, mobile radio. And also, I'm going to test, also uh, do a, a control test. I've got the uh, Kenwood uh, commercial grade handheld radio and also an aftermarket microphone I purchased um, as, as a hopeful replacement for the, the Luton microphone. So, to first uh, start things off, I'm going to turn on the, um, I'll turn off the other radio so we don't get feedback here. I turned on the Kenwood radio. I'm just going to give some test audio. We're using a simplex channel here. And then um, on the other end, a mobile transceiver with, um, with an audio recorder so we can um, see and hear what the uh, audio levels look like. So a quick test transmission. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. This is the Kenwood handheld radio. One, two, three, four, five. KB9 VBR. And with that, now we're going to uh, switch over to the, uh, the Luton radio. I just turned the power on here. We're on the same simplex channel. I'm going to be using the stock microphone with this radio first uh, transmission. So stand by. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Okay, with that test being done, I'm going to switch now to, um, and this is an aftermarket, uh, Kenwood KMC30 uh, OEM style microphone. It's got the same uh, six pin uh, pinout on it, so it is supposed to be pin compatible with uh, the Luton, the Lexan, and the Jetstream stream radios. We'll plug this in. And see what happens. Okay. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. This is the aftermarket Kenwood microphone on the Luton LT898 UV mobile transceiver. One, two, three, four, five. KB9 VBR. So I did a little bit of research online, and I didn't really, you know, I, I didn't really find a definitive answer why the microphone is so bad. Um, I don't know if it's maybe I got a bum microphone in the, in with the radio. That could be a problem. And other people is working great. If that's the case, let me know in the comments below if you've got one of these Lexan, Luton, or Jetstream radios, and your microphone works great. Because I want to know if I've got a bum mic or not. Uh, some people recommended. Uh, the little hole, microphone hole, maybe expanding that out, see if that makes a difference. I did not try that, um, but I did open the microphone up, and I did, there's a little rubber covering surrounding the electric condenser element, and I did remove that and did not find any difference in signal quality, quality with the rubber covering on and with the rubber covering off. So I, I, think, it's, I think it's in the condenser itself, or I got a bum microphone. Uh, the thing that did work for me, though, is I found out that this radio is pin compatible with Kenwood microphones. So I purchased an aftermarket uh, Kenwood style KMC30 uh, microphone. It plugged right in. It worked great. It sounded, in fact, this microphone sounded identical in my audio tests with, uh, with my control radio, which was a Kenwood handheld radio. So I'm happy with that. Downside? No, um, no keypad on the microphone, but once this radio is programmed, 
Uh, most of the functions, you, you know, I'm only going to mess with the channels, really, and other functions you can get through the menu. So, not a, not a deal killer. I think I'm going to go with um, the Kenwood mic, keep the other, keep the stock microphone as a backup or a programming aid, and, um, and use it with this. Makes a, you know, a good quality microphone makes a big difference. So, is this a good choice as a uh, mobile radio for you? Well, for the most part, it is. You know, 10 watts of power is going to work for most people. Um, seldom, you know, you need more power. Maybe if I was in an urban environment, you know, I would want a little more power to break through the noise floor. Um, if I'm out in the fringes, uh, you know, get a, get, we'll get a stronger signal with a little bit more powerful radio. But for, you know, for most of the time, if I need a radio, that I want to throw into a car, either as a, as a go box situation or as a quickie mount, 10 watts, you know, that's probably going to do it. Um, nice thing is it's very energy efficient. Uh, with the 8, hour, eight amp hour battery, this thing was lasting all day. Um, fully charged battery with normal use, I was getting 8, 10 hours on it. I left it on standby and it ran, it, it ran for 26 hours before the battery was, was practically depleted. Um, so, you know, but the best thing about it is really the street price. At less than, at under $70, uh, you know, the radio is not a bad deal. You know, it's, if you need a spare radio, if you want a second radio, if you've got a radio, if you want to put radios in a couple cars, you know, it's not a budget, it's not a budget buster. Uh, if you want to do something with a go box, it's a, it's a decent choice. So there you have it, uh, the Luton LT898 UV a mobile radio uh, built into a 30 calendar 30 caliber plastic ammo box for an ultra portable go box yeah, i'd love to hear your questions and comments about this build and about the radio so please leave them below the video uh, greatly appreciate it I, I always go through the comments and try to answer them the best i can i'm michael kb9 vbr thanks for watching so, uh, see you later 73. hey i hope you found this video interesting and informative uh, don't forget to check out my first video on the Luton 8 LT898 UV by clicking on this video link right up here. And also subscribe to my channel. Uh, you'll receive notifications when new videos come out. You can do that by uh, checking on the button right over my shoulder. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.